Where do mysteries come from? Nobody knows. But they end here. This is England, and this magnificent pile is Bluebell End. It is the ancestral seat of the famous occult investigator, Lord Zimbabwe. His is the realm of the unknown, the field of twilight and the tenebral. He is a walker in the ether, a lord of the ectoplasm. Ectoplasm by Dan Friedman and Nick Romero. Episode 3, The Affair of the Baddie's Niece. Theremin! Yes, your lordship? I think there may be someone at the door. Yes, you're quite correct, sir. There is. Well done. Theremin, must we go through this again? What are you here for? The views. But what is a butler's role if not to buttle? I can only assume that in a past life I weed in the Pope's crisps, for which crime I was condemned to minister to a mincing fop such as yourself, sir. Oh, the indignity. Well, hello. What a splendid saxophone. Thank you. I'm wondering if you can help me. My name is Candida Clanton. Uh, I'm afraid I can't. It, it is indeed an unattractive name, but if you desire help with it, I can only refer you to the register office. There you will find they can change it to Alice or some such more appropriate moniker. No, no. I mean help with a strange going on. You do deal with that sort of thing, don't you? And unfathomable howdy-doos, yes. It is my métier. Pray, enter. <laughs> rug. What is it? True. Oh. Please, take a seat. Thank you. Now, tell me, how can I help? Me have heap big problem. Indeed you do. It is no titchy matter to be possessed by the spirit of an American Indian. But how, white man, no? My dear, I can sense it in your aura, and the enormous feathered headdress helps. It ain't terrible. Me keep speak funny occasionally. There, there, my dear, we shall soon put things right. Monsterman? Oh, no, thank you. Of course. I'd be delighted to take your case. We must seek the help of my esteemed colleague, Dr. Lilac. His scientific mind may shed light on the matter. Theremin, announce me to Dr. Lilac. Very well, sir. Oh, thank you, Theremin. Back against the wall, Dr. Kraut. There's a poofter coming your way. <clears throat> uh, my butler, he, um... Pray, follow me, my dear. <laughs> Oh, let me see. Where is that plankton? Doctor, good day. How are things at the cutting edge of scientific discovery? Ah, your lordship. Yeah, my work is progressing somewhat slowly. Ah, but the secret to success, my dear doctor, is like the aftermath of a Bombay banquet. One must keep going. That's all. Have a look at this. This may interest you. I believe I have instilled the beginnings of a religious awareness amongst these mollusks. This Velk, for example, is now Jewish. Oi, vey! You call this an experiment with the machines on the My dear doctor, magnificent as ever. This almost parallels your flamenco barnacles. Ah, yeah, they are also doing quite well. <laughs> so tell me, what brings you here? Dr. Lilac, may I present Miss Clanton? How? A pleasure. Please, have a seat. Hello, little pussycat. What's your name? This is Schrodinger. He is a semi-dead cat. Uh, what is he saying, Doctor? He seems to be complimenting Miss Clanton's skirt. Was Schrodinger? But she has not brought a beaver. Nonsense. Clams do not wear beards. Yes, yes, Doctor. Miss Clanton seeks our help with a small difficulty. She is possessed by the spirit of an American Indian. Nonsense. This is not possible. 
the human body cannot be possessed. It is not inanimate, like, for example, a country. A country can be possessed, but made part of a glorious empire, which will be ruled by a master race of other humans who will reign. Uh, yes, Doctor. I shall prove to you that we are dealing with possession by a spirit. What are you going to do? I'm going to perform an exorcism. <gasps> Miss Clanton, with your permission, I shall don the earmuffs, oh. and the Doctor will put you into a trance by explaining the workings of the lepton ray. Ah, the lepton ray. Yeah, but this is very interesting. It's also quite simple. By calculating the neutrino probability function of the third degree of a scale, one can consider a of two particles, one can construct a field ray. Ah, thank you, Doctor. She's bored into a stupor. Now we shall make contact with the demon. Are you there? Oh. What do you want? To kill you. Where are you? Behind the curtains. What is your name? Theremin. Extraordinary. I have a butler cook. Oh, Theremin, honestly. <laughs> is this Kansas? No, but his lordship is a friend of Dorothy's. This isn't working. Perhaps, as is the case with the school meal, the difficulty is in identifying the source. We've established that you are possessed by the spirit of an American Indian. Tell me, do you have any evil relatives in America? Let's see. Oh, my great uncle Ike Clanton. He was evil. Not Clanton the Waffle Baron. Yes, that's him. Hmm, perhaps he holds the key to the mystery. Our only course is to go back in time a moderate amount and question him. Theremin, prepare my bags. No. We leave for the Old West at once. Oh, thank you, Lord Zimbabwe. I would like to give you this. Me hope it bring you um heap big luck. A pearl necklace. How kind. Dr. Theremin, make haste. There is no time to spare. But how do you propose to travel to the American West? We shall go Dutch. Sir, perhaps you would grant me the great indulgence of telling me what in the name of the brown tongue of Jeeves are we doing here? Us? No, Schrodinger. That organ is not on his head. Uh, quite, quite. Uh, my friends, we are going to travel to America by a means to which I, Zimbabwe of Bluebell End, alone am privy. We shall charter the Flying Dutchman, that ghostly ship condemned to rove the high seas for all time. It is one of the greatest mysteries of our age. The other one being, why are we standing in a rock pool at the behest of this monumental dandy prat? Yes, yes, all will be revealed. Doctor, if you'll light the beacon to attract the Flying Dutchman, and I shall recite the necessary incantation. Oh, do shut up, you unconscionable bird. The Flying Dutchman from his eternal task. Ah, Captain Vanderdeck and my old friend. It is I, Zimbabwe of Blue Berlin. Ooh, and it is I, Thurman of Arsehole. Oh, Thurman, please. Ah, share me, old fruitcake. Come aboard, come aboard. Hmm, I am. Um, <coughs> but Schrodinger. Uh, yes, yes, I can guess. Thank you, Schrodinger. Come on. Sure, would you like some brownies? Thurman, what have you told him? Oh, I see. Cakes. Yes. So, Sherman, tell me, are you still sorting out the shenanigans? Uh, pardon me, Captain, uh, but it is I. Who... Oh, yes, I remember you. Lord Zanzibar, Thurman's Valley. Hey, so tell me, where do you want passage to? We wish to travel to America in the near past, about the time of Grandpa's. Hey, sure thing. Hey, you want some skunk? I think you know. I must say, Captain, that it is indeed an honor to meet with someone who was the subject of an opera by Wagner. Oh, sure. I am curious, however. Tell me how it is that you came to be condemned to roam the high seas for all time. Oh, well, that's a long story. Uh, yes, well, another time, perhaps. It happened many, many years ago now, when I was but a maid. Picture this, if you will. A savage, stormy, wild, wet, and windy sailor was on watch one night as we rounded the Cape of Good Hope. All at once... He saw something that made his heart turn to stone. Quickly, quickly, where's the first mate? He's at the captain's berth. Oh, when will the captain be old enough to run the ship? Quickly, call him! What seems to be the trouble here? What's going on? There is a ghostly form appeared on the poop deck, Mr. Vanderdeckham. 
See for yourself. Leuvenhoek, quickly, break out the muskets. Come on. What is it, sir? Well, let's see. It's a glowing figure of an old man with a long beard and an omniscient, benevolent aura about him. We're obviously under attack from evil, shape-changing pixie creatures. Open fire! But, Captain, what about his badge? Saying God! Probably a misspelling of pixies. Shoot! Unfortunately, the pixie creatures escaped. But since then, I have been doomed to roam the high seas. But I don't think the two things are necessarily related. A scary story, no? And, uh, uh, yes, uh, Captain, uh, perhaps it is that time. Uh, would you be good enough to show us to our quarters? There's at least a quarter in the fudge brownies. What? Theremin, don't eat the... Easy now. Chill, bro. Hey, let's party. We got some groovy onboard entertainment for you. Live for your pleasure. It's the 1890 Eurovision winner, Little Ingrid, with Dipila, Dipile. I want to show you my ankles. Oh, Dipila, Dipile. Oh, oh, oh baby. Do, 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 do. Oh, yes. I want oh, to win. show you my ankles. Oh, dear. Dipila, Dipile. Goodbye, my friends. And good luck. Thank you, Captain. And remember, if the Almighty lands on your ship again, don't shoot him. You sink? Okay. I believe this is the hometown of Miss Clendon's family. We should ask one of the locals for assistance. Uh, let's try that speakeasy over there. Good day, gentlemen. I wonder, might you direct me to the whereabouts of one Mr. Clanton? This speech is incomprehensible. Don't fight it. Swallow and be damned. You want the speak easy, stranger? This is the speak difficult. Let us try here. Jedediah, wake up. Uh, sorry. Howdy, boys. What can I get you? I shall have a schnapps. A uh, what? I shall have a famous grouse. See what? Well, a Ribena for me. Oh, I shall a slice? Please. Uh, say, you're new in town, ain't you? We are. We are seeking an old friend. He goes by the name of Clanton. Jedediah, turn that down. Listen, stranger. A man come in here looking for Clanton. He must have balls bigger than the Queen of England. <gasps> You know, when she has those big dances. Ah, yes. Oh, yes. And you listen, and you listen good. I ain't seen nothing. I don't know nothing. You hear? Hmm. What is the capital of this country? Uh, Denmark. Verdammt. Aye, he is right. Who can we ask for such information? Try the banditos in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see what we got here. Two jacks. Two jacks, huh? Check this out. <laughs> Three queens. Hey, you lot, come away from the window and finish playing cards. Pardon me, my swarthy friends. I'm looking for a man. Well, that somehow doesn't surprise me. You stinking son of a dog's whore. Yeah, but we are very busy. We have a lot of laughing, shooting, and bottle smashing to do. Hey, boys! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nevertheless, I am told that you can supply us with the information we need. I can't. You are a son of a great golden whore and a thousand fathers. Every one of them a bastard like you. But how could he have known, sir? Yes, thank you, Theremin. Insolence is like Australia. It is the last resort of scoundrels. Eh, I like you, stranger. You got something. Ah, the price of licentious sodomy, sir. You see that guy over there? That's Clanton. Gracias. Pardon me, sir. I wonder if you have some information that I seek. Well, I hear things. Really? What do you hear? I hear you're lower than a rattlesnake's calmness. They seem to have expert knowledge of you, sir. Theremin, will you please desist? Now, draw. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, me. Tacos! I can't even do that with a gun. That is the quickest thing I've seen since Joe Dolce's career. People of Tombstone, please do not be alarmed. I, Zimbabwe, have merely freed your town from the yoke of terror. I have single-handedly defeated Ike Clanton, the evil waffle no, baron who... Oh, you have killed Bill Clanton. Ike's much slower and slightly weaker younger brother. Ike is gonna be very annoyed with you, Moshasho. Oh, bravo, sir. You've killed the most dangerous and vengeful man in the West, brother. Who are you people? I am Doc... Holiday? Hey, everybody! Doc Holiday here! 
Where's he? The man who shot Billy the Kid. A legend amongst goats. And you must be Wyatt Morganer. I'll be under the table if you need me, sir. Come on, Thurman, will you act the part? Oh, thank the Lord. We need no sheriff. I Clinton shot the last one. Why? Ike Clinton is trying to drive us all out of the small, independent, homely waffle business with his big waffle baron empire. He won't stop till he's the only waffle seller in town. As you know, the waffle is a staple diet of the pure-blooded white American. We need us a sheriff who'll stand up to him. Very well. I should be delighted. Listen to... up, people. You may call me Sheriff Theremin. Theremin, they mean me. Come quick. He robbed the stage. Sheriff Theremin! Sheriff Theremin, Sheriff Theremin, you must do something. Easy now, Miss Ellie. No sense in getting vexatious. What on earth are you talking about, Theremin? You said act the part, sir. What? Theremin? Are you crazy? Don't sass me, boy, or I'll tan your hide. I'm the law now. What are you gonna do now, Sheriff? They've brought the stage. They've taken all the actors and scenery. Don't you get all in a sassafras about it, Miss Ellie. Old Sheriff Theremin will soon fix you right up. Did anybody see who done it? Two strangers. Right. Arrest these two. But, uh, but Theremin, you know that it wasn't me. I was here all the time. That's you. your story. Take him away. Ah, oh, the indignity. Imprisoned by one's own butler. He says there is somebody approaching the jail. Who could it be? He says to stand back from the bars. these horses. Why are you doing this? You made the horses go faster. No, no, I mean, why did you break us out of jail? Well, there was no one else to break you out of. No, I mean, why us? Because there was no one else in the jail. Yeah, but enough of this jocular pussy flash. And let us just say that I do have a score to settle with Ike Clanton. And a man like you, and a man like me, could do great things together. Maybe later. Why do you hate Mike Clanton? Uh, it's a long story. Oh, well, perhaps another yeah, time. The eh? year I was born was a year of terrible hardship. The harvest failed. I was born under a bad sign. They said, under no circumstances, give birth here. I was the oldest of a large family, which made me older than both my parents. And my father was a miner, uh, so as he was under 18, he could not work. Uh, he still went down a mine to keep the wolf from the door. Then one day... While he was down the mine, the wolf came and ate my mother. We did not have two pennies to rub together, so we used sticks. And then our little house burned to the ground. We waited and waited until the restaurant closed down. They were dark days until I discovered I was getting up at night. Where I grew up, there were only two ways a man could go. He could become a priest or a bandit. I enjoy the freedom to break the law and to lie and rob people. So I became a priest. And that is why I hate Ike Clanton and his waffles. So what do you think? Uh, then um, your father's death shall be avenged. But I just told you my father died of piles. Ah, yes. Um, but somebody must pay. <laughs> now, Sheriff, huh? I think you've had enough for one night, Sheriff Theremin. Nonsense. Just one more throw. All right. Another prostitute for the Sheriff. Well, howdy, big boy. Oh. oh. Listen, drums. Do you know what it means? This is terrible. I believe they intend to break into a jazz riff. Your Lordship, look. There is a discarded waffle carcass on the ground. It looks as if Clanton may have passed this way. What are you doing? Listening to the ground. You forget, Doctor, that the secrets of the Sioux Indians were bequeathed to me by Chief Fiddles with Wolves, the violinist, in return for my services in the affair of the Navajo blimp. Attend. I place my ear to the ground, thus. Anything coming? If I'm correct. One cat, an ice cream cart, and three spiders on stilts. Well, I suggest we immediately move off. We need to find Clanton before nightfall. There's no time to lose. Oh, you fiends! What have you done with the spiders on stilts? Listen, we just... Allow me. I am an expert in the tongue. Hosquatl Ahme do Haido Iroko Hash Elle. He is with you? No, no, no. Ah, good. Some thoughtful traveler has taught you English. Well done. You come take land away from Injuns. You die now. Ah. There is a scientific term to describe this predicament. 
Deep Doo-Doo. Look, Bossy, all right. Theremin, against all hope. It's the sheriff. Hooray! It's Theremin. Oh, howdy. Excuse me a moment. Johnson, where did you say the gold was? About 40 miles over that ridge. Right. Carry on. <laughs> Come on. I apologize. My butler, he, um, space dust? Oh, not bad. Oh, now you die. First, we got your heart. Open his shirt. Oh, look, this necklace. You recognize it? No, it's in the way of heart. Oh, well. You have been spared by fate. The gods smile on you, oh stranger. We greet you as brother. How? Oh, like this. Whoa. White man fast. I'm hit fast, like fox in winter, or wolves running from chief fiddles with wolves. How? We cherry blossom Indians. Me chief. My name, miss out definite and indefinite articles. This, never inflect verb. And this, big chief confuse subject and object pronouns. Who's that? James Last of the Mohicans. Me, bravest of all. This, my son. Born in the year of the great winds, in the time of the silver moon. Nice. What's your name? Gary. Interesting. Why did you call him Gary? Uh, that long story. Oh, I understand. Never mind. Another time. In the time but... of snow, a white man came to village. Him not like other white men. Mm. Him brave and strong. And he was called Gary. Good. Mm, yes. No. Sir. Him called Steve. Mm. But him bring with him young son. Ah. Young son like my son now. Mm. Him good son. Yeah. Tall and fearless mm. like Chakaka tree in hurricane. And called Gary. Excellent. No. Yeah. Him Dave, mm. but him come with best mate. Mm -hmm. Him small man, but with stout heart, mm -hmm. like mountain lion, yes. and hair of gold, mm -hmm. like evening sun. Uh, uh, Gary? Yes. <sighs> no, make mistake. Him oh. Kevin, but he speak of man he knew in far off land. Why, Why is, is he, he called, called Gary? Gary? Me come to that. Hold horses. <laughs> him born in time of falling leaves. When he born, wife say to me, what we call first son? Let me say, Gary! Chief, we come on a quest. We seek the evil Ike Clanton. Ike Clanton? Him heap big enemy of Cherry Blossom Indians. Oh, why so? Him build waffle shops on sacred land. Ah, oh, interesting. Indeed. Could it be that this is the cause of Miss Clanton's possession? Could it be that Ike's ancestor must pay the price for his greed? Hmm. Ancestors haunt until get satisfaction. Ancestors unhappy till Ike Clanton dead. Him bad. Then you'll help us? No. But we give you directions to Ike Clanton's caboose, and we give you shelter for night. You sleep in my teepee? It would be an honor. You comfortable? Uh, yes. Hey, yeah. <laughs> good. Hombre, is this really Tombstone? What has happened here? I fear that Clanton may have got here before us and caused this Lord devastation. I fear not. Us. Lord Zimbabwe is a horse. Theremin, how could you do this? By drinking lots of alcohol. Well, at least we're in time. The Clanton gang will be here at any moment. If anyone wants me, I'm out. It's too late. I left a calling card at their caboose. Hey, Ringo. You finish rustling those cattle? Just about. Ah, oh, that's better. See, there's a note here for you. What's it say? Lord Zimbabwe. Occultist and adventurer cordially invites you to be shot to death at the OK Corral. PBAG. PBAG? What in hell does that mean? Please bring a gherkin? I reckon. Right. Let's ride. Excuse me, is this the OK Corral? Yeah, it's all right. The Clantons is coming! The Clantons is coming! Are coming, madam. I think you'll find the vernacular is a quite acceptable standard. Thank you, Sonny. Well, it is a comfort to know that we are not alone as we face our enemy. My dear Mexican friends, you are loyal and faithful. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> well, looky here. It's Mr. Zucchini and his four-eyed friend. Let me see now. I see you got about as much chance against all of us as a sniffer dog at a vegetarian party. 
not so fast. <gasps> Indians here? Don't you have reservations? No, we quietly confident. Exemplary. Clanton, as they say at lights out in the convent school, stick them up. Never. There's still more of us. True enough, but I assure you, sir, that my blade is more than a match for your six guns. Guns? Oh, BPAG. We thought you meant gherkins. Hmm. Under the circumstances, I cannot fight a lesser armed man. I am honor bound to. Oh, man! Oh, for shame! On guard! <laughs> be going. Well, Ellie, we need somewhere safe to build the new waffle shop. Hmm. Old Navajo cemetery sound good to you? Sure thing. And that was when I dealt the fatal coup de gherkin. Oh, Lord Zimbabwe, thank you, thank you. And so, my dear, you may go, safe in the knowledge that you are completely free of Indian possession. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. Farewell. Safe journey. Adieu. Goodbye. <laughs> well, another case is successfully solved. Yes, Doctor. I think we handled that rather well. I couldn't agree less, sir. Ectoplasm was written by Dan Friedman and Nick Romero. It starred Nick Romero as Lord Zimbabwe, Dan Friedman as Dr. Lilac, Peter Donaldson as Theremin, Sophie Aldred as Miss Clanton, Owen Oakeshott as Hefe, Colin Guthrie as Ringo, and Benny the Ball out of Top Cat as Schrodinger. All other parts were played by the cast and crew. The producer was Helen Williams. What is happening? God! I mean, the evil, shape-changing pixie creatures have appeared again on the deck! What should we do? Shoot them? Yes! No, wait! Do nothing! We shall merely wait! Lay down your guns! <laughs>